just like when I think about some of that stuff, it's just like, geez, like I didn't realize that I went to such a ghetto school. Like mm-hmm. I hate to call it ghetto, but I mean, like when you think about it, if you go into school and you getting backpack checks and all of that kind of stuff, like it's pretty rough. Um, it's pretty rough, but it seemed normal yeah. at the time. We thought nothing of it. And then when you were explaining some of the things that you were explaining about the safety precautions and stuff that people have to do now, it seems kind of wild, you know, like it seems kind of wild where it's like, you can't have a regular backpack. You got to have a clear backpack, getting random searches, things like that. It's almost like kids don't get to have that kid element, but it's almost like balancing safety and like normalcy. And it's just kind of, it, it, it almost seems kind of sad. Like when you think about like what it's coming to. Yeah. But also look at it like this being where we went to school at, we really weren't in the safest situation. Like, the way those buildings are set up, the open mm-hmm. courtyard, anybody could just walk in from off the street onto campus. Like right now, when I think about that, like that is such the unsafe environment. Like I can't imagine going to school there, being a student in this day and age. Like there's no safety and security there. Right. Because the buildings are so open and then you have the buildings that connect. So it's like they, they can never be on a complete lockdown if needed. No, absolutely not. Because there's just too much, there's too much open space. And like, maybe that's why it got to the point where it got to, right? Where it's just like, freshmen are here, you're there, like, y'all gonna wear these shirts, where do you belong? Type of situation where it's just like, they they have to do these things. But it's just uh, it, like, the thing that baffles me is, it's just like, it almost, I see it as a mental health issue. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I see it as a mental health issue on a lot of levels where it's just uh, it's a lot of things that need to be dealt with that don't get dealt with because we're dealing with like the the of course you have to deal with the immediate threat, the immediate issue. Right. So it's just like if we're if we're talking about school safety, of course, like these things that we have to implement are important. But I think our country doesn't necessarily prioritize mental health in any type of substantial way and I think that it also plays a a part in our society because it's just like if nobody's taking care of or prioritizing mental health now we're having arguments about guns and you know what I'm saying school safety are people responding fast enough and like yeah all of those things are true they're relevant they're important but like what's what are the factors that are making people more often than not start picking up these guns going into schools you know what i'm saying where it's even a situation where it's just like a where the six-year-olds shot a teacher Mm -hmm. how is this happening i mean a lot has happened since the whole covid thing like those two years i guess just kind of messed up a lot of people mentally not having the social interactions that they used to have um and I feel like a lot of people just lost their mind and they went crazy after that because so much has happened since then in a negative way for mental health. There are more mental health issues, you know, coming about nowadays. And kids have mental health issues at a younger and younger age. I see kids, you know, as little as six and seven years old who are talking about killing themselves or shooting themselves. And the sad part is some of them actually have a plan. Like they've worked it out. They talk about how they'll do it. So when you get to a kid who tells you they have a plan and they've already started thinking about it, then you have to call the mental health hospital and have that kid put under a 72 hour watch. Right. And like, that's a whole nother situation because that kid, you know, either their parent takes them over, which is voluntarily, or if the parent says they're not going to take them over, then the sheriffs take them over and they put them in the back of their cop car with handcuffs on and take them to the mental hospital. That happened to my friend in high school. Yeah, but like if you're already having thoughts of trying to harm yourself, what do you think that's going to do to them putting them in the back of a cop car with handcuffs on? Yeah, it's traumatizing. Exactly. And then when they get to the place, that place is traumatizing. Because I talked to students when they've come back and they told me like, oh, You know, you can't have your cell phone in there. You have to eat these horrible meals. Um, You can call your parents on the phone that's there, but that's about it. 
and you got to go to group therapy. You got to go to sleep, wake up at a certain time. You sleep on a hard plastic bed. There's no sheets in there. Nothing you can use to hurt yourself. It's like a prison. It's like a jail for them. Right. So that whole situation is traumatizing. Yeah. Like I had that experience. Right. And like the, uh, I had a friend in high school that had some mental health issues and this was like my best friend. I was really, I was really close to her. I cared about her a lot. And uh, she was giving some, like some warning signs and she was doing some things and she was like letting us as her friends know about these things, but it was, it was traumatizing. You know what I'm saying? The the, the things for us, it was traumatizing because she would be like, she would be cutting herself and then she would be sending us the pictures. Right. Uh-huh. And, and like we're in high school we like um this is a problem this is not okay or whatever so you know we have the conflict of just like so what do you do do you let her keep doing it or do you talk to a counselor like everybody tells you to right right and you have some friends that like we we as the friends got together and we like all right some we got to do something right Because this isn't okay and we don't want anything bad to happen to our friend. But at the same time, we don't want to be, you know, snitches either. Like, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to snitch on you either because we don't want to make it worse than it needs to be. But we ended up collectively being like, all right, we going to tell the counselor because she's crying out for help. And this is the only way that we know how to get her help. And there was one friend that, that was like, nah, I ain't doing this. You know what I'm saying? She's just like, nah, I ain't doing it. And she has her reasons or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. But what wound up happening, right? Like, we tell the counselor about it. We go, we tell the counselor about it. And like, literally that same day, um, because they were away, like they were doing like some other stuff. Like, you know, the type of high school I went to, you get to some, some shops get to do stuff off campus or whatever like that. And that's where they were. So when she wound up coming back to school, they didn't know that we did that. The friend she was with knew that we had talked to the counselor, but like she didn't know that we talked to a counselor. And long story short, when she, when she ended up coming back to school, um, she was at the lunch table like crying because that's the first time we saw each other was at, at lunch, right? And she mm-hmm. was at the lunch table just like crying. And then she like looked at us and she was like, y'all told him, Y'all told on me, like, and I remember she looked at me with all the hate in her soul, like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all told on me, and it's just like, we already didn't know what to expect, right? Mm -hmm. We we didn't know what to expect, but in that same period, like, they wound up, like, taking her out of school, you know what I mean? Like, they took her out of school, like, escorted her out in the middle of lunch type of situation, you know, and it's just like we didn't see her for days. Uh-huh. You know, and it's just like me, like I felt like the worst person ever because I thought I was like helping. And it's like, y'all done took my friend to jail. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all done <laughs> said, like, she needs mental health help. And y'all done, y'all done took her to jail. And that sent her on like a whole spiral yeah. for like years you know like yeah so like yes like that kind of stuff like is traumatic like you know and I feel like if it's done the right way it could be effective I've had a student like one of the students I had to do it for she kicked screamed cried on her way out but when she came back she was like you know I was really mad at you when you called those people I mean you know that right and I was (laughs) like I know and she was like but thank you for doing it she said because it got me the help I needed. They gave me some medicine to help me control my feelings. And they gave me coping strategies so that I won't, you know, hurt myself anymore. Right. And I said, really? She was like, yeah. She said, so thank you for that. And I was like, you for real? And she was like, yes, I'm for real. And I was like, you don't hate me? She was like, I don't hate you, but I hate that nasty food they fed us in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I was like, wow. You know, so like, I mean, I'm not going to say that makes me want to call them on those, you know, kids all the time. But right. like, if I see a child who's crying out for help and they're actually trying to hurt themselves and nobody's trying to help them at home, then, yes, I am going to get them the help they need, you know. Mm. But that's the worst thing, you know, to have to do. Is yeah. to do that. Absolutely. And I mean, she did wind up thanking me later, too. And we were able to, like, 
mend that mend that friendship. But you know what I'm saying? Like situations like that, it's it's not it's not a fun situation to be in for anybody. And I think right. we don't necessarily take mental health as seriously as we could and again like we don't know what's going on in the home either because like sometimes at home they dismiss the red flags to be like oh you just being a kid oh you just this 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 that but it's just like if the parents don't recognize the problem of course the kids aren't going to recognize the problem they just think they're crazy but it's just like we don't have certain things like coping mechanisms and outlets and things like that like we don't have those types of things you know like where it's just like journaling and doing art and things like that. It's just like where we grew up, it's like people don't necessarily do those types of things when they go home. Like they don't know about that type of stuff. So we we don't get those we don't get those opportunities to do those kind of things. Right. 